we know that we can use our periodic table as it represents our, t our table as it represents um, the energy levels in atoms, we can use it to help us to write electron configuration straight from the periodic table. Let's try a simple atom. Uh, let's look at sodium. Here we have sodium. It's uh, It has 11 electrons because its atomic number is 11. And so we can count or we can write our electron configuration based on the periodic table. So counting our electrons, we see we have one, two. We have two, electron, two S electrons in the first energy level. Moving down the periodic table, notice that we have two electrons in the 2s energy level. As we move across, notice that we have six electrons in the 2p energy level, followed by one electron in the 3s energy level. Okay, so what does this electron configuration mean? Let's break each part down. So here, that is N, or the principal energy level. Here, these represent the sublevels. These represent the sublevels. And here, we have the number of electrons in that sublevel. We could expand this electron configuration to show that <clears throat> the two electrons are in separate p orbitals or each pair of electrons are in separate p orbitals, but that's not necessary for what we want to do here. Let's try another one. Let's try let's try one of the Let's try one of the transition metals. Let's take a look at vanadium. Oops. It's got 23 electrons. And we can go about writing our electron configuration based on what we see. We know we've got two S electrons in the first energy level. We've got two S electrons in the second energy level. We've got two or six P electrons in the second energy level. Moving on up, we've got three. We've got, nope. Yes, we've got, sorry, two electrons in the in the S uh, sublevel on the third energy level. Moving on to the P sublevel, we've got six electrons. Notice as we go in across, we end up here in energy level four. Notice here on the outside, we're in energy level four, and there are two S electrons in that energy level. And we know that the D block doesn't start until the third energy level. So as we move forward, we have one, two, three electrons in the 3D energy level. Now why this is, is because the 4S electrons have a little bit less energy than 3D electrons. If we think about it, let's go back to our house right quick. Let's think about our house. If you were filling up the house with guests, how would you rather that guests be filled? You rather that guests be filled in each bed one at a time until the beds get full. Now, when we get up to the fourth and the third floor, notice that the third floor gets kind of crowded after, after the P room is full. Well, remember that 
all systems want to have oh goodness, sorry want to have the least amount of energy expended right so we're the electrons are placed so that there's the least amount of energy that's involved in holding those electrons near the nucleus so by crowding in electrons down here in the d orbital that's a little bit more energy than let's say putting electrons up here in the fourth energy level so once the 4s sublevel is full then we start adding electrons here down in our d energy level on the third floor this trend continues as we move up the floors but we won't we won't be doing any electron configurations that go up too much farther than the 4p um, energy level maybe some 4ds but not necessarily um, 4ps let's do some more let's do some more practice let's do another let's do one of these elect these elements over here let's take a look at selenium notice that selenium we'll start over here selenium has 34 electrons so we can fill up the electrons based on the periodic table and i'm going to write them quickly notice that we remember we write the 4s we've got four the two 4s electrons followed by the d electrons and then we have one two three four p electrons and what energy level are we out here notice that out here we're still in the fourth energy level so we put those there notice that these notice that as we went along we filled in electrons just as we were just as we were going from atom to atom right so there is at some point where we can do a shorthand um, notation for electron configuration if we use the if we use the um, noble gas configuration we can con we can determine um, if we know what the noble previous noble gas is we can use that configuration as a shorthand so let's take a look at sodium sodium is number 11 the previous noble gas is neon how many electrons does neon have well the number is here 10 so we can take these 10 electrons here and we can do this notation as neon followed by the remaining electrons in sodium and we have our noble gas configuration let's take a look at selenium selenium the previous noble gas here is argon argon has 18 electrons so we can count out the first 18 electrons and that is two, four, ten, and we have these guys here. So notice that these first ten electrons, or these first eighteen electrons, represent argon. Notice we're left with the remaining electrons for our the remaining electron configuration. So we can write it as argon 4s2 3d10 4p4 now when we're thinking about valence electrons those are going to be the ones found in the outermost energy level and that is n so 
Whenever you're looking at valence electrons, you want to find those that are in the highest energy level. So let's take a look at sodium. What are the valence electrons in sodium? Well, if we look at the electron configuration, we notice that 3s, these electrons are found in 3. Let's use a different pen color. Let's use purple. Notice that the highest energy level is 3. So the valence is the highest uh, energy level is 3. So sodium has 1 valence electron. And we know that because it's found in group 1 right here. Let's take a look at selenium. Well, if we find the highest energy level, we know this, that that is 4. And if we count the total number that we have, we have 6 valence electrons in selenium. If we go back to our Bohr model, we started off where we said our nucleus was in the center and we had our principal energy levels surrounding the nucleus. For ease of the drawing, I'm just going to do two energy levels. And when we're putting the Bohr model and the quantum model together, we can kind of see how the energy levels are broken down slightly. So if we take a look at each energy level, let's say that on the S energy level, well, I'm sorry, not the S energy level, on the first energy level, we have an S orbital. It's spherical and it can hold two electrons. Let's say this is, um, this is three dimensional, but I'm drawing it on a, you know, 2D space. If we go now to the second energy level, we have also an S energy level. And but we also have we also have our P energy levels. So they're dumbbell shaped and we have one, two, and three in the X, Y, and Z axis. So we can have those two electrons in our S orbital, and then we can additionally have those six electrons in our P orbitals. If we went out further, to the next energy level where we have n equals 3, we see once again we have our s energy level and we can put two electrons out here and we also have those p energy levels that extend out beyond the energy levels that were in, or I'm saying that, that extend beyond the orbitals that were in the second energy level. And notice we can have electrons, six electrons out here. See here how this S electron is somewhere within this P orbital space? That's only because we're in 2D. And um, in actuality, these electrons cannot occupy the same space at the same time all right and remember the orbitals are our probability is a probability it's a place where we could probably find an electron in space at any given time so hopefully this helps you to visualize i can't draw the d orbitals they get to be a little bit too complex if i put them all together hopefully this allows you to see how the atom the atom gets larger as we end up with more and more energy levels and also how the S and the P orbitals uh, relate with each other. Hopefully that this short video has helped you to understand writing 
electron configurations and understanding valence electrons.